All right, we are back. We are just about to start the next game here in the Ascend Triple Threat on court two, taking on the number three Manitoba team. They're just working their way through there. Tempest on the far side of the court wearing those tiger stripe jerseys. And there is the whistle on the opening rush. Oh, I'm, you know what, I'm, I actually had that wrong. They are not the number three Manitoba team. It was New Era, they took on Zeal, uh, then it, Apex, Dark Horse, and Tempest. So Tempest is actually the number five Manitoba team. All right, we see Ascend coming up to the line now. Looks like Devlin trying to catch it in his feet. Not a catch, though. It was not a hit either. And then going out in the toes, that's going to be the shot there on Brillinger. So I do uh, want to let you know, David, I got it wrong. Tempest is not number three. They are number five. <sighs> I am. Words can't express my disappointment. Yeah, and I honestly. But I'm only in you, so it's okay. There, I should know that. That's. It's fine. <gasps> it's fine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna land the plane, and they're just gonna be protesting outside the airport because that. Ascend is actually number nine, from Ontario. Really? Yep. It's because Fury uh, was unable to make it as a team. Oh. So you'll see some of their players on a few other rosters, and uh, that position was shifted down a little bit. All right, so getting back into the game now, we see the Tempest players, they're down to four. Which is not to take anything away from Ascend. They're, they're really showing why they deserve to, ooh, that was a great control situation. Ball comes in, hits him in the chest, pop it from one hand to the other to the other, and finishing off that catch. Big turn for that point for Tempest. Going after low there, low managing to get out of the way, big jump, close to the line. It's Nguyen and Lowe left now for the Ascend side. Going after the Tempest boys through the two, uh, through Brillinger and Kemball. Zen's roster actually has a couple additions as well from what their lineup was for Provincials. Ooh. The catch <laughs> and the slightly late counter. That is, was a huge catch there. Team throw comes in, one high, one low. They make that hit and the point goes to Tempest. Definitely a turning point catch there and it was on uh, Grenier who caught it. Noah that, Grenier. That juggle catch was just a little bit earlier. Huge for them. Refs shifting the line refs over just quickly so that they're lined up on the side where the rush is. Make sure that they can see that the teams are lined up and prepared and not leaving that line early on the whistle. Also appreciated that they're out of our line of sight. Wow. I mean, I think everyone here is wonderful, and I don't mind seeing any of them. What she, means, me up, aren't you? what she means Aww. is that where we're located down here on the floor, it, it makes us have a much easier line of sight on the opposing teams if uh, those line refs aren't in the way. We appreciate the, uh, the vantage point so we can bring you that world-class commentary. Yeah. Now we just need to also yell at the retrievers to make sure they're also not in our way. Gatza coming up to the line, taking a lot of those pump fakes. Gatza is... You know, sometimes he can be a bit of a reckless player. He's not afraid to take those solo shots, but, you know, it, it works for him a lot of the time, and that was a follow-up shot by Trudeau right into the face of Yoshida there. Yoshida sliding off the court, taking it down to three players now. Low making that play call, going between the Tempest players, going between Trudeau and Gatza, and right up and over into commentary again. Tempest is certainly what you might call loose, but maybe a little more chaotic. They're a little more prone to taking those shots, not in a super set play moment, stopping to collect the ball and so on. Big advocate for that controlled chaos. Just shows you a different approach for a different team. And that's Devlin getting low out of the way. Unfortunately, the way he was going, it does end up connecting with his shoe, so he does get eliminated. 
big catch there from, not a catch, uh, almost looked like a catch from Rajano, but he does manage to sweep the ball over for his team. Uh, that's going to give them that ball advantage as they toss two over. Tempest returning fire, and that was Chung taking a shot at low. In these early sets for Ascend, they seem to be looking to take a lot of slightly delayed throws just after the throw comes in from Tempest. Not worrying about setting up their play outside of maybe just making that call in advance and then looking for that opportunity in response to the Tempest throws. Mm -hmm. Rajana with a nice big block forward. Sang getting nice and low with another block. Ascend with the five ball advantage now. Again, Ooh. Tempest, that little Tom more Chuck chaotic. trying to bait them. And they took that bait. They throw right at him. Tom Chuck comes up to the attack line, almost ready to take that counter, but decides he just wanted to bait that ball over as they retreat to the back line to reset. Tom Chuck takes the shot at Singh, does not connect. Wants another one of those catches, I think. Calls that hit on Chung. One of the first times Ascend is actually throwing themselves out of uh, a ball advantage or an even ball situation. Opting for that extra throw. Advantage returns to Ascend with four now as they move forwards. Back to that three ball defensive situation. So she's got the Grenier and Tomchuk left, taking out Rajano. Low and Singh left on the court for Ascend. Low thinks about that rolling ball, but sees the threat from the Tempest side and lets it go to, without worrying about trying to chase it. Yeah, trust in the retriever for that one, and he sent it back over to Singh. Tempest with that burden, though. Low getting down nice and low, managing to avoid that counter shot on Grenier. Grenier gets eliminated. Couldn't quite secure the catch. Low blocks down. Oh, great shot from Singh. Tomchuk not able to get out of the way in time there. That backcourt throw on Tomchuk while he's slightly distracted. So just Gatza left now. He is definitely one of those players where he's going to fake where he's throwing and then counter that shot. Always something to look out for with Gatza. Gatza anticipating blocking, taking a counter shot at Singh. Sing blocks. Oh, huge catch from low as he was on the retreat. Gatsa throws and just pow right into the bread basket. Perfect grab. That's going to be the first point on the board for Ascend now. They've got it tied up as we are still in the first they half. They call a timeout or no? Just just a quick huddle. Just just a little chat. All right, running up and grabbing those balls. We got Low getting up and high out of the way. And then he was running with Nguyen. Nguyen, two in hand, watching what Low does, waiting to take that counter before he sends it over to Singh in that wing position. Rajano getting Low out of the way after that counter shot from Tempest. Tempest Still quick to respond to the ascend throws. So with six players each on the side of the court, going after Gatza. Gatza getting low out of the way. Taking that shot at Rajano, not able to make that catch. He was going for it. Gatza gets his revenge after that catch from low. Singh with a nice clean block. Unfortunately, he passes it back over to the side of Tempest. That's going to give them the burden now again. Going to reset that. It's very interesting to see from Tempest versus a lot of teams again. As soon as the throw comes in from the opposition, they don't necessarily huddle up much. I assume it's a defensive play call that's made in advance to be ready for that transition, but they'll, they'll opt to just move up and take a shot like they already know, or there's just a trust between the players to know that once one releases, maybe we reassess. Um, you know, personally, uh, knowing the way that uh, Gatza uh, likes to run his team, again, uh, Stefan Trudeau, he's the captain of the team. But uh, Gatza is one of those veteran players on the Manitoba team, and he's, he's a drill sergeant. Also, now we have Trudeau with a huge team catch that's going to take out Atkinson. It's just 
Singing low, now left again for the ascend side. It was actually a shot that hit uh, Trudeau in the chest, popped up and out, and then he laid out to make sure he secured it before yes. being eliminated. He totally did that. <laughs> All right, so we're going to see just the two players left now for the ascend side coming up, taking on Tempest. Trudeau coming up, counter shot from Brillinger on low. A pair of familiar faces to find themselves in that situation on the ascend side based on the games we've been commentating here. Brillinger getting light. Great out of shot. The way, and that's a counter shot on Singh there. Singh Couldn't quite dodge. <laughs> Singh looked a little bit winded after that one. Uh, his teammate Bunsell in the uh, retriever penny making sure he's okay. He has had a lot of minutes on this court yes. in the last three games. A lot of air time. Again, not to say that any of it is him dominating in any sort of way or demanding things of his team, just situationally finding himself quite late into those sets put in that position and oftentimes coming through for his team. So we've got less than a minute now left in the first half. Tempest, two points ascend with one point. Looks like this one is going to go into no blocking as they rush for the balls. Grenier trying to take that hit off of the opening rush, trying to psych him out, but they do manage to <laughs> retreat and send their balls over. Going after Grenier and going after Devlin again. Gatza with the hit on Rajano. Can hear that bouncing off of Brillinger. Coming up to the line, taking that shot, going for Grenier. Ooh, All Bunsell of... losing his footing and needing to retreat back very quickly, sliding on the court there. Luckily, his team is watching out for him. Grenier taking the shot. Counting it down, and there is the whistle. We are going into no blocking. A lot of quick chaos right in those last few seconds, including that catch on the left-hand side by Gatza. Tempest is definitely one of those teams that is going to be uh, taking a lot of those shots very quickly. They like to close it out, eliminate as many players as possible uh, going into that no blocking round. That shift and that aggression really makes this no blocking point going to be difficult for Ascend, staring down across the court with another team with twice the players. All right, the ref calling it out now, letting him know it is no blocking. End of the first half. Chung coming in hot and heavy, taking a lot of those fakes up at the line with Gatza. Brillinger sending one over. Looks like that takes out Bunsell. It is just Nguyen and Singh left. Oh, Yoshida, pardon me. One of those really dangerous aspects of this, when you have that distinctive a player advantage difference, you have to worry about that many more potential throwers. Mm -hmm. in Especially a given with volley. the no blocking too, so you really have to focus on those dodging skills and that footwork. Expertly demonstrated by Nguyen now, just getting low, getting his foot in, down in there, able to pop back up very quickly. Teams will play afraid, and oftentimes that fear in play will yield you throwing a bit more, which can then just compound the issue. Oh. Going after Nguyen, Nguyen pops it up high, trying to get that team catch, letting Yoshida know. Unfortunately, he was not able to get it in time. Just Yoshida left now for the Ascend team. Three balls in hand, taking a shot at Trudeau. Taking another shot at Trudeau. Tempest stacking two players on that left-hand side for them. Going for Gatza. Gatza gets eliminated. Chung gets out of the way. Yoshida holding his own. We see Grenier making that playing call, saying throw together, and they do, and that's going to take out Yoshida. We're going to see teams switch it up as we go into the second half.
All right, we are back now. We are into the second half. Going Tempest for that lineup. Grenier takes a shot. The score advantage here. Tempest currently with a two point advantage. They are leading three to one. Ascend trying to get more points on the board. So far, they have not won against any of the Manitoba teams they have faced off against this morning. All right, coming up there, taking out Tomchuk. Looks like he was trying to get some air there, but it does connect with his shoe. Ascend with that four ball possession, choosing to send one of them, leave themselves in an option for the next volley. Came up to apply the pressure there, but unfortunately was alone up high. So he had to watch out for that shot coming from the ascend side. Chung getting nice and low, blocking the ball. Just the three players left now for Tempest. This might be the second point on the board for Ascend. They do have that player advantage right now. New one coming up, taking a shot. Great a shot from Reggiano. Mm -hmm. Just just hitting him in the feet. Ooh. Chung going in for that counter on Singh. Singh managing to stay alive, catching it at the last minute. Retriever quickly passing that ball over so they can spread it out on the Ascend side. Block from Singh, advantage returns to Ascend. Four balls now over to the side for Tempest. Devlin making the play call to Chung. Chung takes the shot, whips it around. Chung gets low, unfortunately not low enough as it pops, drop shot right onto the back, pops off of him. It is just Devlin now left for Tempest, taking a shot at Singh, getting up out of the way, avoiding those two balls being countered at him after the throw. Going for Singh again. Singh doesn't connect with the catch. Didn't bite on the pressure from Yoshida. Chose to take the throw at Singh, the player just behind him. Again, uh, Devlin. with that deceptive windmill. Mm -hmm. Devlin going for those counter cross-court shots at the wing who replaced Singh, and that is... Will Yoshida. Ascend opt for a rundown? No. A team shot. They managed to get him just on the knees. Ascent takes that point and gets our score differential just that bit closer. Love that honesty from Devlin there. It was interesting to see Tempest finding themselves down players for one of the few times in this game. And they, they just slowed down their pace quite a bit. A little more secure, collecting that fourth ball before they move forwards to try and execute. A little bit of back and forth on the rush there. Ascend with the advantage. The balls are back to Tempest, and Tempest moves forwards on the offense. A little bit of back and forth. All right, we see Tempest coming up to the line now, ready to take those shots. It is Tomchuk, Gatza, and Brillinger at the line there. Devlin handing the ball over to Brillinger as he's taking that wing position. Lots of back and forth shots coming from both sides. I like to think of foam dodgeball as kind of a game of chess. Mm -hmm. Occasionally you have to sacrifice one piece for another to create a better opportunity. Not necessarily meaning a player being eliminated, but so much as a player putting themselves in a dangerous position to make those openings for others. John getting down nice and low, almost doing that matrix moves. Reggiano returning fire with that low windmill shot. Chung staying up at the line with a ball in hand, trying to bait them as he dances around the court. Chung with an excellently timed, quick counter onto Singh in the corner. It's one of those things when he's up there moving like that, he's actually prepared to take that shot, being ready for that opportunity. 
So just the three players left now on the side. Going for Tomchuk. Tomchuk gets high up, out of the way. Oh, going for that team catch. Unfortunately, does not connect with Nguyen, and he does get eliminated. That's going to be two players out now. Just Jano left for the side of Ascend. It was a great attempt by Nguyen to try and wrangle that ball in that it hit low. They just couldn't quite get the control of it. But those team plays can be huge in this game. Nice block by Rojano. Still with the four players left for Tempest now. They are going to try and work him, tire him out so they can get that hit. Tomchuk doing a lot of fancy footwork coming up to the line, trying to bait him, takes the shot. Rojano's very used to those moments. He just got caught looking for that rolling ball on the ground, wasn't able to secure it, and by the time he committed to that position, they were, Tom Chuck is ready to take a shot on him. One of those high percentage looks being so close to him. This end having some quick substitutions, get Bozell on the court. Bozell, sorry. Advantage on Tempest again, and they get another. It's actually been the same idea on the last couple rushes. They get their first hit from Tempest, and then it's returned by Ascend right after. Ascend with the ball advantage down a player. Throw comes in. No response from Tempest in that moment. Again, opting to get control of that extra ball, come forwards with it before executing. See Gatza coming up to take that wing position now next to Trudeau. Play call being made by Bunsell. Going for Tomchuk, Tomchuk hopping out of the way over to Devlin. With the pools as we have them in this schedule, it lets the teams have a nice kind of compressed timeline so they don't have to be playing throughout the day with too long of breaks. But in the same vein, three games back to back, it's understandable that some of these Ascend players might be getting a little more tired. It's a lot of play. Blocked by Bunsell, return fire, taking out Trudeau. 66 minutes of game, high intensity. It's understandable that they're getting a little sweaty and moist. <laughs> that is one of the favorite words for a lot of those Manitoba teams is moist. And there are some people that vehemently hate that word. <laughs> I am not one of them. Uh, there was a Manitoba team for draft who called themselves moister than an oyster. That was an awkward season. All right, huge block by Rajanda. They're going after Devlin. Devlin looking to return fire, taking the cross court at Yoshida. Tomchak getting out of the way after that throw from Yoshida. And it looks like Rajano managing to block that shot from Devlin. Devlin Ball. with a hesitation on the throw. Yeah. Read like the moment, see how he felt. It almost, he looked a little bit hesitant to take that follow-up shot. Devlin try, take that shot, but Yoshida drops the ball, gets onto his knees, baiting him into making a throw to try and get a catch. Devlin retreats at the last moment, and then that follow-up shot there finally takes out Devlin. But it looks like it was a trade. Yoshida is eliminated as well, so it's just Tomchuk and Rajano. Not sure how familiar Tempest is with some of these players, but Rajano, you have to be very aware of his windmill as well as being very aware of the danger of the catch. Nice. One, two there. Timeout being called. Rajano really good at getting down low and playing from the ground there, able to actually get a windmill off from on the ground, which is a very strange thing to see and not common, and can get quite a bit of movement on that throw too. Backcourt to backcourt shots. It can be very deceptive and a little bit uh, difficult to deal with as an opponent. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen it come out today in this game very much, but it's definitely one of those things that Rajano has in uh, his toolkit. Two minutes left now on the rest of the game in the second half. We have Ascend two points, Tempest leading with four. Timeout was called on the Ascend side. Give them a moment to figure out what they wanted to do strategically, let Rajano get a quick breath, maybe a little bit of drink, it's and then we'll hop back into it. It's going to give a moment for Tom Chuck as well. You know, they're definitely trying to read him, trying to get those counters off of Rajano. Whistle being thrown now. 
We can change it. We'll make timeouts only be for one side of the court. The other court has to, I don't know, just run laps. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's so mean. I love it. Nice big jump there from Tomchuk going after Rajano. Rajano jumping out of the way. Windmill throw on Tomchuk. Managing that, to pivot right at the last second there. That windmill breaking just a little bit to the right and Tom Chuck dodging to get out of its way. And there it is. Right in the chest. That's going to close the gap on this one with a minute 40 seconds. Only a one point advantage now for Tempest. Rano is capable of taking an overhand throw as well, but favors that windmill because of how effective it can be. I think the windmill worked perfectly for him. Of course. There, there are actually a lot more women's teams that seem to use it than the men's. A little more familiarity from softball, I think. The adaptability of it, though, for a lot of the men's players, I think, works really well, especially because a lot of those cannon arms, being able to have that versatility in the throw, definitely saves a lot of muscles, uses a couple new ones, and it, you know, just adds variety to your, your play style. It, uh, it makes you less anticipatable. Big fan of it. It's great to have options mm -hmm. that you can look to for your throws. But it's, it's, it's a special skill that requires time and practice to do it well. So it's really seconds. nice to see those who are efficient with it. 50 seconds now left on the clock. Still the full lineup for Tempest going after five players. Now, ooh, another one elimination for Yoshida there. The pace Ascend is using here looks like they want to get themselves in this position to possibly win this. They're not after a tie. Playing very hard, playing very fast, going after Brillinger and Devlin. Both of them getting out of the way. Looks like... Brillinger does get eliminated off of that hit. Got the one player advantage on the Tempest side. Time is ticking down. Singh blocks down nice and low off of that shot from Trudeau. Gatza blocking that shot from Nguyen. The hit Gatza. on Gatza, mm -hmm. and we're going in a sudden death. No I it's, blocking. I believe it's a four on four. Apologies. Yes, no blocking. Well, I'm just letting people No, my brain's just so programmed. <laughs> it's hard to readjust. Again. No blocking is the correct way to assess this. The only change in play is that now, if a ball makes contact with the ball that is in your hands, it's as if it hit a portion of your body. You know what you need to do is get a, um, a rubber band, put it around your wrist. Every time someone says sudden death, you just snap it. So you're saying that I should develop some sort of association with applying a little bit of pain to myself? Every time they say sudden mm. death, yes. Okay. Slippery slope. <laughs> That's uh, Trudeau throwing at Bunsell there. Bunsell gets eliminated. <laughs> Four players left now for Tempest. Taking the shot at. Ooh. Yeah, it the looks end. like does get eliminated off of that one. Singing low. <laughs> left on ascend. For the last time of these three games on this commentary court. Four player. Oh, looks like Lowe was going for the catch there off of Trudeau. Trudeau makes the hit. Still four players left for Tempest going after Singh. Last one standing. Five balls in his possession now. Let's see what he'll do with them. Two balls in hand going up and over on Trudeau there. Bit of a high shot. Uh, it was a distraction throw. Ah. For me as I watched it. Yeah, me too. Grenier. Oh, Grenier gets taken out. Wasn't expecting that one. Goes in for the catch. Chung, as Singh gets out of the way, looking to grab that ball, taps him in the shoulder. That's going to end this one. Tempest takes it 5-3. to three. Singh played that really well. Good shot selection, good timing on it, awareness for those throws coming from the other side. But Tempest was able to just get those two throws together as a team to give him no option, nowhere to go to survive. All right. Coming up next on the stream, we're going to see Hard as Foam taking on Mint.